Hi, everybody. Welcome to Career Pathways, um, how we can help. We are really excited for this presentation and for our two guest speakers that I'm going to introduce to you in just a few minutes. Um, as you are joining, uh, please keep in mind that we are going to be um, recording this. So if you do need to leave for any reason, you'll be able to view it later on our YouTube channel. Um, and you can also feel free to put your questions or comments in the chat. Um, and we will try to stop throughout the presentation so that we can answer your questions. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited for this for this uh, presentation. So just wanted to give you guys a brief background about the 22Q Family Foundation as far as the Career Pathways program and how we got started with that. Um, and then I'm gonna introduce our two speakers. So um, we launched this program, Career Pathways, back in 2018. It's crazy that it's already been about three and a half years. Um, and the reason we started this program was just a need that needed to be met in our community. So we had lots of parents of young adults, um, you know, teenagers through adulthood that were having a hard time with that transition to adulthood, leaving high school and transitioning either to college or into a job, um, a lot of times into a vocational or trade school. And we were finding that their needs were not really met. Um, you know, our, our children and young adults with 22Q don't really fit into that typical box for vocational and trade schools. And so, um, their needs weren't really being met and we needed to address that. So um, we were introduced to uh, Jason Osborne, who you're going to meet soon, um, who is an amazing human. <laughs> Let's start by saying that um, he has over nine years of experience in HR and he came to us um, as a father who had uh, lost his daughter who had passed away due to some complications with um, 22Q and he just wanted to give back and try to keep her memory alive. Um, and so we worked with him to create this program career pathways and basically the program is put together for whatever your needs may be so whether that's looking for jobs looking for careers internships resume building interview skills um, the list kind of goes on and on looking for the right colleges if that's if that's your route um, and the reason we call it career pathways is because we know that any individual with this syndrome um, 22q affects them in a unique way all of our journeys are similar but very different and that's kind of what we feel, um, how we felt about creating career pathways is because every individual has their own unique skills and interests um, and trying to help them with those skills and interests to get on the right pathway um, to find success because success to everyone means something different. Um, but how we get there is, you know, sometimes the hardest part. Um, so without further ado, I wanted to introduce to you our first speaker. Um, his name is Jason Osborne. We are so, so, so thankful for all the time that he dedicates to our foundation and to the 22Q families and individuals that he's helped us um, support for the last three and a half years. Um, and he's gonna be speaking about more in depth about the Career Pathways program, as well as um, the different obstacles that have maybe come up, giving some stats on what we've been able to accomplish over these past three and a half years. Um, and then following him will be, we're really excited to have um, an individual with 22Q, her name is Cassie Southwick, and she also happens to be a recipient of one of our scholarships in the past. And she's gonna be sharing about her kind of takeaway and how she was able to um, navigate her pathway by using our Career Pathways program. So without further ado, I'm gonna have um, Jason join us. Let me go ahead and share his screen. Give us just a minute. And if you're just joining us, welcome. Um, we're just about to get started. And do not worry if you missed the first intro because this will be um, on YouTube later for you to view. Okay, great. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right, great. Well, uh, thank you uh, everyone for, for uh, taking some time today to learn a little bit about uh, Career Pathways as well as uh, discuss uh, some of the, the resources available within our 22Q community. I appreciate the introduction. I, I uh, tell people a little bit about the opportunity to serve in this community, and I gain so much um, uh, greater empathy, and also I gain so much knowledge from working uh, in our community. And actually, I've uh, kind of, you know, on, uh, in addition to working with the 22Q Family Foundation, uh, 
am, am recruiting other HR professionals uh, to help out in the same same area uh, because I, I really feel like you learn so much more uh, when you're when you're very involved in it. And so I, I've, I've definitely learned a lot. So I, I wanted to start off with what is Career Pathways? And uh, Lindsay did a great job describing why it's called Career Pathways and, and what we've been doing for the last few years. And uh, it's really one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think that's a key call out with this. We, we try to cater the uh, the needs of the individual uh, as as the top priority, and we've worked with with a lot of young adults throughout this. And one of the the great things about the way that uh, Lindsay and the foundation have really expanded this is it's not just for those who have 22Q, but it's also for the caregivers, the uh, the parents, family members, because we know that a lot of a lot of changes happened over the last couple of years, especially with COVID. Uh, there's been job loss. There's been job changing. There's been a desire to go into a different uh, field than, than we've been in before. And so it's a, a great opportunity to say, hey, let's pick up the phone and talk through, you know, even if it's just sprucing up the resume a little bit, maybe you already have one, but you just want to have, uh, have another set of eyes. Uh, to take a look at it. So uh, my background in human resources, really, it, it's a, it, it's very involved in hiring. That's, that's a big part of, of what we do. Uh, I work for a company called Wonderful Citrus. Uh, you've probably seen the, uh, the little halos, uh, mandarin oranges that, that are sold uh, usually from November till about May is our season that we're, we're picking, packing, and selling halos. So uh, that's my day job, and it's a lot of hiring, a lot of training. And so one of the things that I really uh, have have learned throughout uh, this career pathways and and leading it uh, with with the one-on-one -on -one consultations is it's a it's a relationship that we build. And throughout the the journey and the pathway, there's different needs that are pulled in. So we may start with a resume. And then after the individual uh, is employed, there may be a need to talk through, okay, I have a need to talk through an accommodation. Uh, it, as they were in elementary school, that was through an IEP. It was uh, through communication with a teacher and the, um, and the parent. Now, I also know that even with IEPs, their strengths and weaknesses, depending on where where the individual is across the, the country and, and what that support looks like. So um, then moving into high school, there's, there's uh, conversations with the, the teachers, even going into college, there are resources available through the universities that really help, help a student feel heard uh, and, and make sure that their needs are being met. But what about when you graduate? What about when you're uh, outside of high school and you're in this new world of, of job? You know, it's not as easy to have a parent or a professor. It's really now you're dealing with an employer. So something that I, I really like to bring to the table is a view from a human resources perspective of what can we say? What can we not say? How do we, how do we go about um, requesting those accommodations? Because legally, uh, it, it needs to be, uh, the employer needs to uh, listen and be willing to uh, participate in that accommodation process. So uh, that relationship that's built goes through each, each part of this. We talk about networking. Uh, I know that many of you have heard of the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I think that it's a very, you know, it's overused as a phrase. And I think sometimes that phrase is to be used as, well, it's not really a fair hiring process. They just hire the people that they know. Well, the fact of the matter is when you're trying to fill a position, if you have a referral or if you have someone that knows someone, you are going to consider them for the position. So the way the path really works is your resume gets you the interview, the interview gets you the job. But if you are a referral through, uh, through someone in your network, then you kind of skip a couple steps into the interview phase. Uh, many times you still need to interview and, 
and go through that process. So, um, you know, that, that experience, getting some practice in interviewing is priceless. Many of us know what our background is. We know what we've done, but explaining that to someone else, especially someone that we've never met is, is challenging at times. So uh, that's a key resource that we have is, is really doing the practice in interviewing, um, talking about the ele elevator speech. In 30 seconds, how do I tell about myself? And it's not natural for really anyone, whether you have 22Q or not, it's a very, it's a challenge to do that. But the way you can overcome that challenge is just by practicing it, by doing it over and over again. And so that's a resource that, that we offer. Uh, another uh, opportunity that we have is those in our community um, need to make certain decisions. Uh, do I go to a four-year school? Do I get my associates? Do I do an internship? Do I do volunteering? Do I work full-time or do I work part-time? And the answer to all of those is it depends. It depends on what you're trying to do and where you're at. And so that's why it's really based on the individual, because as we talk through what your pathway is, we can work through what works best for you. Are you driving now or do you need to have something close? Do you need someone to uh, provide transportation for you? So that, you know, that can, can help determine what, what the next step is for you. I remember uh, many of you know Donna, uh, uh, Donna Landsman uh, supports um, many of our services with the 22Q Family Foundation. And I remember uh, uh, talking with her early on as we were starting this, and, and she talked about how it's, it's not for everyone. A four-year degree is not for everyone. And I think sometimes we think, I can do it. I can do anything. And we can. We can do anything if we put our minds to it. And the, the point is not to limit, but the point is to be realistic on what your skills and what your interests are. And so that's a key thing that we consider. What are your goals? Uh, we set goals and we, we do follow-ups uh, frequently to figure out where you're at on those goals and, and really try to see what is best for you, what college programs are best, uh, and what internships are, are available. The reason I focus a lot on internships is because if you can try something out before you put both feet in uh, and go, uh, go all in, it's much better for you, but it's also better for the employer because they can get a feel for, is this someone that I want to have working for me or do I need to, um, or do I need to look at different options? And it's better to find that out early on than to be full, full into this uh, career that you may not actually like or or be interested in. So uh, we work through a lot of those a lot of those questions that uh, that uh, come to people's mind. So why should you participate? And and this is kind of the the sales pitch on why why do the career pathways? Uh, I think a big one is you are able to connect with people who are in similar circumstances whether you are a parent or a caregiver or a family member of someone with 22Q, um, or if you are someone with 22Q that's trying to navigate what your pathway is, you're going to be connected with people who are in the same, um, this, the same area. They're, they're in the same mode right now. And as you build that network and those relationships, it goes back to what, uh, what I said earlier, that network will help you in your career search. It will help you know where, where you can get a job. And, and, and also it will help you understand, um, you know, I'll, I'll share a, a brief, a brief uh, win that we had within the last couple months is uh, many may be aware of a program called REACH, R-E-A-C-H, where it allows a, a young adult to have experiences that allow them to transition from living at home to living on a college campus. So this specific one was um, through the College of Charleston in South Carolina. And I had worked with a young adult in practice interviewing for the, the REACH interviews. She ended up getting uh, accepted into the program. 
uh, which was was really exciting for her uh, and her family uh, because that was a dream for her. Uh, fast forward a, a few weeks, and I get a call from, uh, or I'm working with a young adult who said lives in Illinois, but has family member in South Carolina. And she's going to visit the College of Charleston. And I said, oh, wow, I actually am working with another young adult who's doing the same thing. She's um, the, the second one who was going to visit, isn't going to, uh, to college, isn't planning to go to college for another year. So she's just planning ahead. And so one of the things that um, I brought up to that, that young adult was, hey, um, have you heard of the REACH program? And she said, no, I haven't ever heard of it. And so I said, what if we connect you with the individual who's, who's going there literally in a few months and let's connect you two so you can meet each other. And as, as the person who's going there now, or actually she is there now, she's on campus, <coughs> she can help you understand a little bit of what that experience is like. Even if you don't end up doing the REACH program, you can get to, get to know what the College of Charleston is all about, whether she likes it and, and what her experience is. So it was really, it was really uh, helpful to be able to connect those two um, and, and help them uh, get to know each other. The second point that I bring up there is every session we have, the individual who's participating is challenged with a, a, a homework, if you will. They need to do something on their own and to participate. This, these sessions are definitely not a, um, you know, speak at someone or, or, or just talk to them. Uh, it's not a lecture uh, for sure. It's really hands-on. So if we are talking about resume and, and I'm sharing a skill of building a bullet point on your resume, then I'm going to invite that person to build one or two bullet points in the uh, between now and the next time we meet. Uh, if we do practice interviewing, I'm going to invite them to share what they've learned with their family. And in networking, we're going to have you build your networking through LinkedIn and other, other resources available so that when we meet next, you can guarantee that the first thing that I will talk about is tell me how it's been building that network or practicing your interviewing or building those bullet points. And I will be honest, if between the time we met and, and the time we meet next, which is usually about a week, no uh, progress is made, I'll, I'll express disappointment because I, I have found that those who participate and are active in the participation get so much more out of it. So um, in, in a sense, it's, it's really a, a very um, hands-on program that uh, it, I won't hand a template of a resume and say, okay, here's your resume. Uh, it's really, you, uh, you need to participate as, as, a, um, as a participant in the program. So uh, the third one is, uh, I, I can't emphasize enough, it's the uh, needs of the individual. I can tell you that, uh, you know, I wanted to bring out a couple examples of individuals that I've worked with. Uh, one is uh, a young man who, really likes to build uh, models of, of stadiums. So he really likes baseball, he really likes sports, and he really likes being able to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, he really likes being able to build those stadiums. And then he actually um, has worked with a couple major league baseball teams to, to sell those to those, those owners. And so one of the things that we, we uh, were able to put together is a website where he could put his portfolio online. So something that I like to work with individuals on is how do you market yourself? A big part of, of these career pathways is really just telling um, your story and telling someone about yourself in a way that a, a hiring manager would, would understand it. And so in this case, the way he would tell about himself is actually through an online uh, online um, profile and a um, portfolio. He hadn't had that before. Before he was using Instagram, which was great. But when you're communicating with a baseball team and an owner of a baseball team, it's much more helpful to be able to send them to a website 
that they can scroll through. And one of the things we worked on is really creating the experience for those who go to his, his portfolio and helping them see how many steps are in the process uh, for this. So, you know, that was really taking someone where they're at and just progressing a little bit. Everyone is unique. Uh, the other one that I, I like to, to share an example of is uh, an individual on the East Coast who loves, um, he loves a podcast. So he really wanted to be able to do um, some, some video editing and audio editing for podcasts. And so what we were able to do is he, he applied to multiple opportunities. And I, I like to explain to people that uh, that last point, the destination is important, but we can learn a lot from the journey. Because when you're going through the journey of applying to these positions, it's only building you more confidence in yourself. You may interview five times and be rejected, and it will be so disappointing. But know that each of those times that you were able to interview was an experience, <coughs> and it was part of the journey of building that skill set. So what, what uh, I was able to work with this individual on is we did the applications and um, the mindset at first was, I really want something paid. I want a paid experience. And that is the, the goal uh, at any, uh, of any opportunity. But then he found one that was unpaid and it was a three month internship where he was able to work with a podcast uh, and we were able to do the practice interviewing. He was able to get the, the internship that was unpaid. But eventually, after the internship, we continued to work through his skills and applying for positions. And then he was able to get a, a job uh, outside of that um, for a minor league baseball team uh, where he was working with the scouting team to um, kind of uh, record the pitches of the of the baseball players. So uh, in a sense, he was still able to use his video background uh, to be able to um, get a job that actually paid. So he, he was in the end able to get that. Um, the other thing that I, I like to point out at this point is we like to start where you are. There are many who are working because we work with young adults and adults from all across the country and they work with the local state um, it's, it can be a department of rehabilitation. It can be a state program that, that provides coaching. Uh, this is not meant to replace those services. What we have seen is that the services across the country are very different. It's very, very, it's variable on what those, what those services are and the quality of those services. So take those services and definitely still be involved in those services but allow us to supplement that and really help help um, uh, take take where you're at and, and help you progress further and, and make it uh, individualized for you. All right. So what what have the results been? Uh, how have we been able to, to impact the, the community? And I'm really excited. Uh, and, and I know we're going to introduce uh, Cassie uh, after this. So that, so that we can kind of share another example of, of, of those individuals who have been uh, really benefited by these, these resources that would not be made possible uh, without Lindsay and, and their vision, uh, you know, the 22Q Family Foundation's vision for really helping the community. Um, <clears throat> so over the last two years, now keep in mind, 2020 was during the pandemic uh, and we're still in the pandemic. And we're, we're not done with 2021, but uh, we've had over 50 career pathway sessions. Uh, we've been able to have 13 individuals have their um, resumes either created or updated. Uh, we've created uh, LinkedIn profiles for six individuals. We've done practice interview sessions for 11 uh, people, 12 networking instruction sessions. We've had three internships and four new jobs uh, from this coaching. And I, I really get excited about sharing the success stories. Uh, and I usually uh, send those over to Lindsay. Anytime someone says they got an internship or they've received a job offer, 
it's really exciting. I also know that it's only one step in the journey because that pathway doesn't stop there. We've gotten a job. Okay, now let's talk through how we can support you through that, that job and, and, and where you're at. So uh, at this point, Lindsay, I think it would be good to, uh, to bring in Cassie and we can, we can tell a little bit about Cassie's background and then, um, and then we, I can ask a few questions if, if you're good with that. Yeah, that sounds great. Did you want to um, do the introductions or for Cassie? Uh, yeah, I can. Currently, we have no questions, um, so um, we can just keep it going, and then we'll save room at the end. Okay, great. And Cassie, you're. Oh yeah, let me go ahead and um, now. Go ahead and get her to start her video. It only should take a second. You should be good to go if you want to introduce Cassie. All right, great. Hey, Cassie, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Uh, I, I, uh, we were able to meet uh, Cassie really right when we started the program. Uh, she was one of our first participants, and uh, she was in high school at the time. Um, and then she was able to go to college, and you know, we'll tell a little bit uh, about her story, but. Um, Cassie, uh, can you tell tell those who are watching what you what you decided to study uh, during your your college years? You, you've had a couple colleges that you've gone to, but do you want to share a little bit about what you did after high school? Yeah, so um, I went to two different colleges. Um, the reason for that was I had a few health issues. Um, Along with 22Q, I got diagnosed with another um, genetic disorder and asthma and other medical issues along that line, making it hard to do college in person. So the first two years of college, I went to Ringling College of Art and Design at Sarasota, Florida. Um, I did photography and I did... Um, my last year, I kind of did a program that they have where you can kind of make your own um, degree, which didn't really fit well with me. Um, and that last year, I got really sick. So I found um, that SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, does an online um, program. So I did e-learning for my junior in um, senior year of college at SCAD, I did, I stuck again with photography. Perfect. And, uh, you know, your situation is not, uh, uh, not too unique in that a lot of those in the 22Q community really, uh, gravitate towards the art and, and, uh, you know, a lot, a lot are, it comes a lot more natural, uh, than other, than other fields. So um, I, I was really amazed at Cassie's skills when it comes to using software, uh, because a lot of what, what you studied, Cassie, uh, really helped you build skills that, um, that are valuable uh, in video editing, photo editing. Um, and so it, it was great. One of the things I really liked in working with Cassie too is she, she had already uh, put together her resume and what we did is we, we took, once again, I'll, I'll go with that theme of we'll start where you're at. And where we started is it was very, uh, very creative, very artsy, and that was great. And, and what, what I explained to Cassie is I want you to look at it from the art view because I don't, that doesn't come natural to me uh, as much as it does for you. And I'll bring in my view from the business side. If I'm an employer, here's what I would look for. And it was a really good balance. Uh, it seemed like it was a, a really good balance for being able to uh, update, update uh, Cassie's resume. So the resume led to her, um, uh, you know, fast forward after she graduated, um, you, you were able to apply for, for jobs. Uh, what, was, what is that like applying for jobs, Cassie? And you can, you can be honest on this one. I do want to mention too that I took that knowledge that you gave me for building a resume and I made like four other people's resumes that helped them get jobs after. 
Oh, wow. That's awesome. I, so I did my brothers and I did um, my friends. I, I helped them put together the information that they shared with me. And then I did the creative side of it. Oh, that's cool. But that's cool. for um, applying, I think that was probably harder than interviewing um, because applying at first, I didn't know what I wanted to do because um, my job it's in the art degree, but it's not photography. So there wasn't a lot of photography based jobs that you a either had to create your own business for or B. Um, I live in Naples, Florida, so there wasn't a lot of like large photographers that you could work with. Um, so I think the hardest part about applying was finding what I really wanted to do. Um, Cause there would be people I would apply and then I would realize, oh, this isn't gonna be a good fit for me or I'm overqualified or, um, and I didn't get it. Or um, I found out something I'm not gonna like after applying. So there's a lot of those like, what if questions that go into applying. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and one of the things that we talk through in when we talk about that applying for a job, it, it really does become a part-time job just applying. And some of the applications that you fill out, they'll be so different than the other applications. And they'll ask for things that are, you know, man, do I have to retype in all of this? So, uh, you know, it is, it is a, a, a process. And you ended up... Um, so you interviewed at multiple places, right? Uh, how did the practice interviewing uh, help you? Um, it helped because you gave me a good set of questions um, that I was able to like think of, I guess, before the interview. So when the interview came, I knew exactly what they were gonna ask, even though those questions are gonna be put at random. Um, so like a lot of those questions are going to be, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Um, tell me about your degree. Um, tell me about your past jobs. Um, my interview that I got the job, they asked me, um, what would you do if this person was in trouble, like needed help with something, how would you help them? So, um, having those questions ahead of time in my head I made a lot of notes made it the interview a lot smoother yeah I think that's a good point the the preparation is the the key for interviewing we're never going to be professional interviewers because it, it's just it's it's a challenge when someone's judging you and you don't know what they're going to ask but there are some key skills that that we like to to talk through um and so tell, tell us a little bit about your current job. Uh, so you graduated uh, it, earlier this year. And what, what are you doing now? I graduated in May. Um, I work at our um, Philharmonic slash art museum here in Naples. And I am the patron services representative. Basically, I sell tickets and give out tickets. Um, currently, this is going to be a full-time job, and I've been doing it for pretty much a month now. Um, I'm currently in the office. I have my own desk. I answer phone calls. I um, answer questions. Someone has a question. Um, I answer them or give them the right direction that they need. Um, I also... Um, in the near future, I'm going to be working the art museum too. It's not open yet until September. So coming in September, I'll be working the art museum as well. That's great. And, and I like that you mentioned that sometimes on our career pathway, we don't exactly know what our destination will be. If I asked you uh, a year ago, if you would be working at, uh, our, it's called Artis, right? Artiste Naples, correct? Yeah. Artiste Naples. You would probably say, "No, nah, I don't. I don't think I'll be doing that." We we don't know what that future holds, and you don't know what you'll be doing in two years from now. 
Uh, but what, how has uh, working at uh, the position that you're in at Artis Naples taken you out of your comfort zone? And what have you learned, do you think, about yourself over the last month uh, as you've been employed there? I actually applied there thinking I wasn't going to get the job. Um, so I was kind of surprised when I did get it. Um, but working there, um, like I said before, I have to answer the phone and I'm really interacting with a lot of people, asking a lot of questions or answering a lot of questions, directing people. And that was my biggest fear working there. Um, I'm pretty shy and nobody thought I would be working at a place where all I do for from like nine to five is answer phone calls. So um, that was a big one, but I found out that I'm actually pretty good at it. Um, I have people, I answer the phone calls and they think I'm the new manager. So <laughs> someone, I had a few people, um, someone came a week after me, he's a newer employee and he keeps telling other people that I'm the manager. And um, someone last Thursday thought I was the new representative, which is our higher manager. We have three. So, wow. She was, yeah, that. she's like, is um, Elise still there? I'm like, yep, she's still here. She's like, oh, I thought you were the manager for a second. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's great. I think it's, it's really good to see that because um, uh, I think as we get out of our comfort zone, it, it can really... Um, it can really help us progress on that pathway. And, and uh, I think, you know, if, if um, something to, to keep in mind that I've said before is uh, the journey, we, we don't know where the, the, the destination will be, but that journey will take us there. Um, any uh, last advice that you would have, Cassie, for a young adult who may be in, in high school or college and thinking about, you know, what they want to do? Um, I have a few. Uh, first of all, don't give up. I know there's times, especially in college, where I was like, do I really want to do this? Is it worth it? Um, but I pushed through and um, I'm the last person people thought who was going to graduate. So um, same with applying for jobs, looking for jobs. Another advice I'd recommend is take that risk. If there's a job that you think you might not get, but you want it, um, apply to it anyways. Um, the worst thing that's gonna happen is you might not get it, but you may also, there's a 50-50 chance that you may also get it. So when I apply to Na Artis Naples, I keep calling it Naples Artis, um, I did not think I was gonna get it. And that was the first job I interviewed and they called me back probably like three hours later and they were like hey I want to interview you for a second interview um, will you come in I'm like okay so I came in and um, they were like okay you got the job and that was the first job I interviewed so there's going to be jobs where you think oh I'm I'm not going to be able to do this or um, this isn't for me um, you can always try it and see what what happens? The worst thing you train and you find out you don't like it and you don't have to continue doing it. But um, my recommendation is take that risk and don't give up. So that's great. And and I really like that, you know, when you see all of this go full circle where Cassie was a recipient of the scholarship through the 22Q Family Foundation, we were able to start while uh, she was in high school, she went to college, and, you know, um, it's it's been really, uh, actually, sorry, let me correct that. I think you were just early on in college. Uh, it wasn't in high school, but it was early on in your college career that we started talking, and then, um, and then we were able to work through uh, you getting a position, and it's good to see how all those connect, and I, I also... Um, I think one of the reasons I bring up that the pathway continues on is now Cassie and I can talk through situations at work where maybe she has, um, uh, maybe there's a disagreement at work. Maybe there's uh, an issue with someone at work 
and I can be used to bounce uh, some things off of. And uh, I hope, you know, give some experience into uh, things that I've seen in the workplace and how to handle some of those situations. Because as you get to your first job, it can be challenging knowing how to navigate some of that. So, so thank you, Cassie. Appreciate your uh, willingness to participate and, um, and the great work you're doing. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yep. All right. So those were the prepared uh, slides that I have. Uh, I would open it up to any any questions that we might have uh, from uh, from anyone at all. Um, currently, no questions that were in the chat. However, I do have a few um, that I can that I was just thinking about that we haven't really touched on. Um, what would be your recommended age to apply for career pathways um, earlier than later? Or what are your what are your kind of recommendations on based on the individuals that you have kind of serviced thus far? Yeah, I I like the idea of starting early, uh, even if it's early in the high school, early, I mean by, by high school, um, uh, freshman, sophomore year. Also understanding that really all we're focused on at that point is uh, being able to uh, build the resume. So let's start building that resume, but also uh, looking at uh, summer opportunities. I think sometimes we miss out on opportunities in high school to build the, that resume that pre prepares us and creates that foundation for the future. So uh, that's, that's something I'd recommend is probably Sorry, you might hear a little one running around here. That's okay. <laughs> so a three-year-old and a two-year-old. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's what I would recommend is probably around 14, uh, you know, that uh, 14, 15 uh, year old. Great. Um, and what we didn't also mention, but super important to note is that our Career Pathways program, along with all of our other programs, is 100% free. Um, and, you know, it is provided by all the donations that we receive year round to keep these services free. Um, Jason volunteers so much of his time. So we're always so appreciative of him. Um, if you are interested in applying, you can just go to our website, 22qfamilyfoundation.org. And then at the top, there is a um, section, I believe, on, I think it, you have to click on education and then career pathways. Um, we're recent, we're updating our website. So that will be a little bit easier to find in the near future. Um, some takeaways I just thought of after hearing both of you speak, um, you know, is that every journey is different um, and pathways are different and pathways also change. So keep that in mind as you are um, traveling this road of, you know, transition from a young adult to an adult. Um, we can help you get there. We can guide you onto the pathway that's best for you based on your skills and interests. Um, but also what I heard Jason say a lot of it's, you know, put that work in and you can accomplish great things. So um, so appreciative of Cassie sharing her story. I think it's always so inspiring for um, parents that are watching this, especially parents of younger children. Um, a lot of times, unfortunately, we're still getting, doctors are still getting kind of grave um, diagnoses to families and not not really showing all of what an individual can do with 22Q. So again, Cassie, I just want to thank you for being open and honest and sharing your story because it's just so inspiring for um, all parents and families and individuals to see what you can accomplish. Um, and we hope that you know more people will take advantage of this Career Pathways program because again, it is free to all of you um, in our 22Q community. And that also includes parents. So I know we didn't really mention that, um, Jason, but we did, um, you know, we've, we've always had it open to families because obviously parents of children with um, special needs children um, tend to not be able to stay in their same career path or job. And so keep that in mind. If you are a parent watching this and you are needing a job or career change, Jason's also here to help you as well. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's, uh, um, it's, it's becoming more and more uh, applicable uh, in our in our environment today, there's there's a lot of organizational changes, uh, and some people have more flexibility to work from home uh, or work remotely that they didn't before, and and we can definitely help uh, with those um, those career changes. Well, I don't think we have any other questions at this time. Um, if you do have questions, if you're watching this on the replay on our YouTube channel, you can reach out to um, me at lindsay at 22qfamilyfoundation.org. I can direct those messages to Jason. Um, and again, we hope you guys um, 
are staying safe and healthy. We're still in the middle of a pandemic and we're thinking about all of you. Um, and let us know if you ever have any ideas for other webinars you'd like us to cover. Um, but again, just wanted to thank Jason and Cassie for your time. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, you too. Thank you, thanks for putting this together. Of course. All right, take care everyone. Bye. Bye.